I'm Sarah Holtzclaw, the Quaker Outreach Young Fellow, and this is my FCNL love story. <laughs> the journey of how an angsty, rebellious teen found the light in a religious home in Quakerism, largely thanks to FCNL and many of you in this room. And yes, believe it or not, that angsty teen was me. Like all good romantic comedies, it starts with a breakup. I grew up in the church with the motto, open hearts, open minds, open doors. But I saw the opposite being practiced in the community's actions. So in eighth grade, when it came time to join the congregation and go through confirmation, I chose instead to leave the church. I know now this was my first leading and my first step towards being a friend with a capital F. A few years later, I was searching for colleges, and these unexplainable magnetisms started guiding me on a path towards Quakerism. I wanted to go to school as far away from home as possible <laughs> until a Quaker named Rich Sidwell introduced me to his alma mater, Wilmington College. It was way too close to home for comfort, but my parents encouraged me to check it out, so I plugged the name into my College Finder database, hoping to prove it was a terrible match. Lo and behold, this small liberal arts college was a 100% match for everything I wanted. <laughs> Isn't it the worst when your parents are right? <laughs> From the moment of my first visit, I fell in love with the college and the community. I toured the campus and I met with the Quaker Leader Scholars. I listened intently and I took notes as I learned about the college's Quaker values, their commitment to hands-on learning, <coughs> and the legacy of Sarah and Isaac Harvey, farmers who followed a leading from God, marched to Washington, D.C., and urged Abraham Lincoln to abolish slavery. At lunch with political science professor Michael Snarr, who's here tonight, we learned about a little thing called Spring Lobby Weekend. Maybe you've heard of it. <laughs> An event where students went to D.C. and lobbied Congress on a social justice issue with the Friends Committee on National Legislation. I was convinced. I was enrolling in this college, and I was going to DC to lobby with the Quakers at Spring Lobby Weekend 2015. I would say the rest is history, but these Quaker magnetisms kept pulling me on a path towards calling myself a friend with that capital F. My senior year of high school, I was taking a religion and philosophy course at a local college. The final project was to design a lecture based on a randomly selected religious group. Any guesses who I was assigned? <laughs> the Religious Society of Friends, of course. I read about silent worship and the light within and this guy named George Fox and the rebellious idea that any person could speak the truth of God really fueled my rebellious teenage spirit. <laughs> it was the perfect capstone of my high school graduation before driving out of Appalachia and into the flat cornfields of Southwest Ohio to study agriculture and political science with the Quakers at Wilmington College. At Wilmington, I learned more about the values and how friends worship and do business. I was curious, and I liked everything I heard, but the idea of waking up early on a Sunday wasn't appealing enough to me yet. <laughs> Thankfully, there were more magnetic moments to come. Sitting in an agriculture course, I learned that a Quaker community called Raven Rocks was looking for a summer intern. My professor connected me to their farmer, Ted, and we agreed that I would be a good fit for their intern. I had just landed my first, but not last, job working in a Quaker field. <laughs> that pun got a lot more laughs than I was hoping for, thank you. <laughs> so then the time had come for me to finally go to my first spring lobby weekend in DC. The experience was invaluable and invigorating. It was my first time being in a space, much like this one, where everyone shared the same passion. By the end of the weekend, we each felt that our voice was powerful and heard. I was terrified of public speaking, and still am, and I was intimidated by the echoing halls of Congress, the marble walls and tall columns, until FCNL gave me the tools and the confidence to use my voice. Just like Sarah and Isaac Harvey, march into my representative's office, share my story, and advocate for change. In 2015, we were lobbying for the PREPARE Act, an environmental bill to prepare governments for extreme weather events. 
Four years later, while I was serving in the Advocacy Corps, organizing my community on climate change solutions, that bill passed Congress and became law. Talk about prophetic, powerful, persistent. Fast forward to my senior year of college. I hold the record number of times a Wilmington College student lobbied in DC. <laughs> the number to beat is 12. <laughs> And I've done every internship and travel trip possible to learn more about Quakers. I worked on eco-friendly construction projects and sustainable agriculture practices with Quakers who still thee and thined each other at Raven Rocks. I traveled to Costa Rica to study climate change in Monteverde, the city founded by conscientious objector friends in Fairhope, Alabama. And I interned at the William Penn House, providing radical hospitality to visiting advocates and activists. At this point, these magnetic pullings and leadings towards Quakerism read more like a bright giant neon sign saying, Sarah, you should really wake up earlier on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I set alarms to wake up early one Sunday, and I worshiped at Wilmington Friends Meeting. When my friend and I walked in, we were greeted by the familiar faces of professors and community members. We found a pew in the circular layout and settled in. Having attended meeting for worship and sitting comfortably in the silence, I felt one last magnetic leading to call myself a convinced friend, capital F. Many leadings, magnetic drawings, and refreshing breaths of silence later, I'm elated to have found a spiritual community in Quakerism. Until my rom-com's ending, when I find a monthly meeting of my own to call home, I reserve the right to claim FCNL as my monthly meeting. <laughs> And this gathering is my yearly. So thank you, friends, for welcoming the convinced. You all inspired me to use my voice to advocate for change. And now as Quaker Outreach Young Fellow, I get to do the same, empowering others to lobby and advocate. I'm humbled to work in this field, where every day I see our values lived out in each of you and every FCNL constituent, working persistently towards the world we seek. Thank you. <laughs>